guest tonight is an Emmy, Grammy, and Peabody Award-winning comedian. He's hosting the season finale of Saturday Night Live this week with musical guest Rihanna. He's also the writer, director, and star of the acclaimed series Louis, which airs Thursday nights on FX. Please welcome Louis C.K. Yeah. Good to have you here. So this nice is to be here. three hosting in three years for you. That's right. Three yeah. in a row. It's a big deal. It is. I should probably slow down a little bit. No, it's good. When you got a hot hand like this, if you take yeah. a year off, you might just fall out of favor. I might be <laughs> not able to do it anymore. Right. But it does seem like ill-advised to keep doing to host over and over again because you, you, there's a finite amount of good in me. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, right. So you just, yes. So if I do too many, I actually had one good friend of mine say, because uh, they asked me to host, and I was like, I'm, should I take a year off of hosting? Because I've done it twice in Europe. And so my friend, who's very famous, and I can't name her, <laughs> she said, um, you know, as your fan, I'd like to see you not host this <laughs> <laughs> And then my other friend, who's even more famous, said, uh, you know, I'm your friend. I think you should take a year off. Wow. And so I was like, I'm doing it. Now I got to do it. Yeah, <laughs> now you got to do yeah. it. Now I have to do it, because... <laughs> There's so many signs that it's going to be like some kind of a awful disaster. Or something. Yeah, and when you get an opportunity like that, you got to go for well, it. Well, here's the thing, too. I can guarantee you this: if yeah. you if you run out of good on yeah. Saturday, Rihanna will not. That's right. So she's you're, very, yeah, she's excellent. She, that's not. Yeah, it's it's not like, going to happen with musicians. Yeah. So if it's if anything goes right. wrong, it's at least you. there's the two songs. <laughs> yeah, it'll be great. The rest of it, sorry. <laughs> No, I love hosting the show. I love it. It's one of and my favorite things. And you had auditioned for the show uh, years ago. Yeah. But uh, no hard feelings now or ever. Have you? Do, no. Did you ever have hard feelings? No, of course not. Yeah. I mean, you can't be in show business and not get things and then get right. upset. You know, it's just the way it goes. But I, yeah, I did audition at a comedy club. Uh, they had uh, uh, they a bunch of comedians went on, and everybody on that audition but me got hired. <laughs> Every <laughs> single person. It was. I was like. Did you feel? <sighs> Did you feel... Lord have mercy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was tough. Did you feel during it, like, oh, this is, everybody's doing great? Yeah, I, I oh, during the audition, yeah. I had a good set. I you, did yeah, good. Okay. Yeah. I did good. They just didn't, which makes it harder to not <laughs> right, get it. Right, Because if you bomb, you're like, well, you know, I had a bad night. But I had a great night, and they're like, no. <laughs> no not the best version of you. We don't want it anywhere near this place. <laughs> Uh, and then you, uh, so you wrote for Late Night, uh, this very show, when That's Conan right. was doing it. That's right. And uh, every now and then, you'd have to maybe fight for your comedy with the host, which happens still, I will let you know, still happens today. Of course it does. Writers yeah. are always, and, and uh, my writers, of course, I'm the one that has to wear a suit and tie, so they immediately yeah. treat me like the man. Right. No, you're the, you're, they hate you. Yeah. God, they it's hate a good way you of so putting much. It. You don't, you'll never know how much they hate you. <laughs> um... Well, you know, writers are in their 20s. I was in my 20s. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I thought, I just saw it like, I want to get my stuff on the show, you know. <laughs> now I know that I was working for people that yeah. I should have been helping because they were giving me <laughs> money. <laughs> if somebody hires you anything and they pay you money that you then go live your life with, you should really want to do whatever they need, you know. That's what I believe. <laughs> At the time, I didn't believe that. I just thought, yeah. you know. Uh, you can still sneak stuff on with the announcer. Yeah, because on uh, the, the basically you try to find your way around the approval process. You know, yeah. there's a head writer and there's producers and there's standards and practice. But on Conan's show, there was a produ uh, announcer named Joel, mm -hmm. and he would make a little joke before he said Conan's name, like a little offside joke. So me and my friend Dino, who were like uh, two of the more uh, we were, had been there longer than other writers, we realized nobody checks those. You just write them and you hand them to the. <laughs> To the guy. So it was a side door. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So we were like, what can we? So we came up with one, which was that he said, uh, he goes, last night the missus gave me a pearl necklace. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's about a, a 40% <laughs> understanding what the joke means, right. right? I think. I don't know how many of you understand the pearl necklace idea. You don't know what it means to give your wife up, or any woman, <laughs> That's or a nice man, yeah, exactly. a pearl necklace. Yeah. And did he, a you Joel didn't. You guys get it? We'll throw, sure you know they get it? we'll throw up a link down here, an internet yeah. link. 
right here. And uh, it'll that'll, explain what yeah. a pearl necklace. It might just say the internet. Yeah. It uh, <laughs> and you can just find it from yeah. there. Yeah. Google pearl necklace. Yeah. You'll see a bunch yeah. of pearl necklaces and. Yeah. <laughs> And you would, and now just to make means. it clear, the unconventional one that doesn't fit the sort of no. the Zales. That, no, page. I would not have been excited to get a joke. Yeah, on and the did air jo Joel didn't know about jewelry. He was in the sixty percent that didn't know. Well, who cares what he? He's just right, the guy yeah. who reads the stuff. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's just he was like, what is this? Just read it. <laughs> yeah, we, he had no power. Yeah. And did you feel... But me and Dino were so excited, and we were giggling in the bathroom. I can't believe we got the joke on the air. And then the head writer was in the stall. We didn't know he was in there. And he said, what joke? <laughs> and we told him the joke, and he was like, oh, well, that's a stupid joke, because he didn't get it. <laughs> he didn't get it. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, so. We'll come back, talk about uh, Louis, because okay. the season's been incredible. Uh, we'll be right back with more from Louis C.K. Uh, this is season five of Louie, yes? That's right. And then this week you did an episode, the entire episode uh, was a nightmare. Yeah, it was a nightmare that kept coming back. And it, because uh, I, I, we usually show the clip before the guest comes out, yeah. but we thought it would maybe, you maybe need to set up the clip or else people would think it was too weird. Yeah. This so, isn't what the show's usually like. Right, that's what we felt like it would just yeah. push people to the I, other. I was hesitant to do a dream show, but this is about somebody having nightmares that they won't go away. It happens to yeah. me once in a blue moon, I'll have a nightmare, go, wake up, go back to sleep, and they're all, hey, waiting for me. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and it just keeps going. So this is an episode all about right. that. So this is a, here's a clip uh, from Louie's Nightmare episode. <laughs> Don't! Don't do it. I'm telling you. Oh my god. Oh my god. All right, this next guy is really funny. Please help me welcome Louis CK. Oh my god. You have is our that's a nightmare. I'm not the specific shape yeah. of, but the having to go on stage, not ready, or yeah. is that a nightmare for you? Yeah, I mean, that's also my real penis. Oh, it is? Yeah. Because it played as a joke. No, that's the thing is, and it clears for standards because it doesn't look like most people's penis. <laughs> that's the way around it. Yes, I usually, when I have dreams where I'm naked, there's something wrong. Yeah. With what's going on down there. And that took a lot of work to, uh, you know, we had these artists that kept making different Shapes. Oh, and you would send them back to the shop? Yes. Wow. A bunch. That was like, the, literally, it was like the 20th version. Wow. We made a bunch because we wanted to make something that could be on television. Uh-huh. So it had to be a uh, non-genitalia-ness. -gen uh-huh. Genitalia. Right. Uh, but it had to be creepy and not, you know, so we ended up with this kind of crawler-looking thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of pinwheel. Yeah. It was, you know, because I was like, I couldn't look like it was like like hacked off. Right. It had to look like it just was That was what else. it was. Yeah, exactly. That, my favorite thing about uh, that discussion right there is someone's job to look at that oh, and, it's and very just say serious. it's in or out. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's somebody, it's very serious. They look at it and they're like, okay, tell us what is it the texture? <laughs> and we talked on the you know, conference calls about that. <laughs> yeah. uh, you also, uh, of the many things you do on the show, edit, write, direct, star yeah. in, um, you are a part of the music as well. And this was a thing that a lot of people at the end of the show couldn't quite wrap their heads around. They thought it was an actual song. That's right. Um, this played during the credits. Yeah. And um, it, well, I want to play the song, but explain, talk through it first, or you want to play it first? Well, uh, it's basically during the end of credits, after I finally solved the nightmare problem, and now I'm sleeping soundly, and there's this very sweet song on, and it's meant to feel like a real song. So then, but then just listen to it, and I'll explain how we made it, but... All right, so the most important thing here is listen to this beautiful song, but really listen to the lyrics.
Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful Gorgeous. song. Yeah. And it feels like. Thank you. Gorgeous. Felt like a different era of a different yeah, era. That's right. Well, I was making music for this episode. I have this band, these guys that are called Sweet Pro, and this guy Matt Kilmer is the composer, and we make music together. I don't have any musical training. I could never do what you guys do, so, but I get to go and just like whistle and hum at them and they make music. So I was trying to come up with something for this episode, and there, we had an opera singer, a real opera singer who was singing this beautiful music. Her name is Giselle, uh, uh, I forget her last name. Uh, Giselle Bella. Okay. Well, that's certainly... Giselle Bella. <laughs> Pause. Z. <laughs> okay. Yes. So she was there singing opera, and she has such a pretty voice. And I start. I thought, what about like a Roy Orbison kind of a song uh, with her voice? Uh, but with, and I just scratched these lyrics down and showed them to Matt because I had to leave. I had to go pick up my daughter at school, and uh, <laughs> so he said, "We'll sing it." So I sang it into his iPhone. So somewhere there's a version of me singing that into an iPhone. <laughs> and then he emailed me that that night, and I was like, "You got to be <laughs> me. That's the greatest thing in the world." <laughs> So we threw it on the end of the. It's yeah. re it is really beautiful and it, it is, is the great? word diarrhea is lovely. Yeah. When you don't know what it means, I mean, for me, I I love the word diarrhea. Yeah. And so now to actually add on the layer of it, yeah. he, have being beautifully sang by sung. a beautiful woman. Um, uh, in in that uh, sort of theme in that area, you had a, there was a great scene this year uh, with you and, and the actress to play your daughter. Yeah. Uh, you have to go to the bathroom. You're walking yeah, down the street, bad. and this yeah. is something. This is an idea you had. Is this based? Well, my show is yeah. diarrhea and poop. Yeah, and yeah. some well, there's some beautiful oh, some, yeah. penises that don't <laughs> work. Um, it's a class show. It's a classy show. Yeah. It's real. It's a uh, PBS next year, right? That's right. It's gonna go okay. be on right on after <laughs> Downton Abbey. <laughs> yeah, I can't do it. Laura Lenny will introduce horn. it. That's right. Tonight on Louis. Tonight um, on Louis. Diarrhea. But uh, this is this is something you've thought about because you is, you have to go to the bathroom. You're with your daughters. You're trying to make it home yeah. in time. You don't. Well, it's New York living, you know. Yeah. And, uh, you're out on the streets with your kids. And all of a sudden, you got to go. I cannot. I can't use a public restroom. Like I just have too many phobias that I need to have uh, the deed of the building I'm pooping in in my hand, <laughs> and you know, three locked doors between me mm -hmm. and the next person. Yeah, that's what I need in order to let go. <laughs> yeah. So, the first year of the show, I wrote this thing where I'm with my daughter. Who, at the time, my daughters were like, th you know, four and two. And as a single dad, when you're out with your kids that little in New York City, if you got to go, you can't leave them out in the street. Right. Or even in a store. You got to bring them in with you. They got to watch you. Yeah. Boo. Yeah. Exactly. Because, you know, like in an airport, your kids are just standing in the <laughs> stall of the men's room watching you poop. It's part of being a dad. Yeah. But so I, I didn't do the bit, though, because I just thought it's just pooping. I don't want to do it. Uh, and Pamela Adlon, who's a producer on my mm -hmm. show, she pushed, she's like, you got to do it. Every year, she's like, you got to do the poop. We call it uh, poop race 2000. We call it race 2000, yeah. but you're going to bleep that. Sure. But so, okay. <laughs> so uh, this year, I thought of an ending, which I hadn't thought of, because now my daughters are grown. You know, they're like 13 and 10. And so they, now it's about them helping me. They're trying to help me get find a bathroom. <laughs> And, uh, and then at the end, I know I'm not going to make it home, and I'm too far from any public restroom, so I've got to let go. I've got to I realize it's time. I'm in too much pain. Mm -hmm. I know I can't make it. i got to let go. i got to decide to poop in my pants <laughs> on the street. Yeah. And I push my daughters away, and I say, get away from me. Don't look at me. You know, go far they're away from me. terrified. They're sad. They're upset. Yeah, they're really I upset. will say, watching it, I yeah. also felt relief. Yeah. When you let go. <laughs> That moment, that's, I realized that that was, when I, realized, when I came up with that, I thought, that's worth doing, because that's profound. That <laughs> you're, there's no worse feeling. There's no worse feeling that in regular life than yeah. when you got to go uh, number two and you can't, which, by the way, for me, is number one in my book. I don't know what you call <laughs> But, but, when you gotta go and you can't, and there's just nothing, I mean, your whole body, your whole system gives yes. up on you, and it's, mm -hmm. and then when you decide, I'm deciding it's okay to poop in my pants <laughs> on the street, and you cross over that threshold, and you just go, come on, let me have it, baby. <laughs> you go, you have, you, you're having an experience, you're going like, this is it, I'm choosing the worst thing ever, but I'm choosing it. Yeah. <laughs> and as it happens, you're just like, God is good, you know? Yeah. Because you feel, you're, you instantly feel better. Everything's better. Yeah. Everything's better. Uh, you can face the world. You, yeah. the actresses who play your daughters are so great. And yeah. you can, not only, 
can you do more with your daughters in real life? But because those they're becoming better actresses, it's yes, so they great are. On the show. It's really well, wonderful. the little one who's kind of uh, you know she's really on fire all the time and for this thing where she's trying to help me find a bathroom to poop and she's just going come on dad you have to poop and i'm like no you have to you this is the worst thing that ever happened i said when i tell you to go away so i can poop in my pants you have to act like you're a refugee being taken away from your dad she's great she's like that would be so awful i said yes and this is only funny if it's that awful yeah. and she was like yeah and she got it so she nailed the scene. Uh, your uh, daughter's in real life now. You yeah. raised them in New York instead mm -hmm. of L.A., which uh, is great. Um, you, I mean, yeah. you live here, so it makes here. sense. Yeah. It would be really hard. <laughs> Send them away. No, honey, you live in Los Angeles. <laughs> uh, but you also, uh, you make sure they don't, they're not uh, getting the, 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 the luxury of show business from you. They're taking the bus to school. Still. They take the bus, yeah. My daughter, my oldest daughter takes the bus. Little one, I still walk her to school, but yeah. the oldest one gets up at 6.35 and she's on the bus at like seven, you know, she's gotta take the bus. And I've got this nice toasty Mercedes sitting there and I'm like, <laughs> it's not for you, baby. <laughs> not for you, you didn't make that money. No. I try to teach her, you know, I think New York is a good place for yeah. kids to grow up and uh, she's gotta learn common sense. One thing I teach her that I, I tell all kids that I know her age, is, you know, sometimes creepy people in New York want to say something to you or it, whenever somebody in New York goes like, uh, excuse me, like this, yeah. I tell her, you keep walking <laughs> and you shouldn't feel bad. Uh, yeah. Because who would, can, he's like, can I ask you something? <laughs> who would ask a little girl something? <laughs> who that's lost, oh, there's a child alone. Can you help me out with something? <laughs> So that's not a good person. You keep right. walking. Don't worry about uh, it. Good, good lessons to learn. Um, thank you so much for being sure. here. Yeah, Always man. a pleasure to see you. Louis C.K., everyone. Watch the voice as well this week with musical guest Rihanna. And Louis, it's Thursday nights in FX. We'll be right back with Sharon Osbourne.